Hey everyone, Zach here from Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows Recall, which is now finally available to try out at home on our own Copilot PCs. The last time we got a hands-on time with this was back in May at the Microsoft event itself. Um, but it's now available to actually try out properly, officially, with the latest Windows 11 preview build. This is build 2620.2415. It's currently only available for Snapdragon uh, Copilot PCs, but it will be rolling out to Intel and AMD Copilot PCs in the coming weeks. Um, so with that out the way, let's dive straight in. I've already enabled Recall, and I know that because when Recall is running, a new icon is placed into the taskbar permanently. You can see it down here. This icon cannot be hidden. It cannot be removed. If Recall is running, this icon will be persistent on the taskbar. And that's mainly a security feature, but it's also a convenience feature. If you click on it here, you can see you get a whole bunch of different options, such as opening the Recall app, pausing it until tomorrow, and jumping straight into Recall settings for more configurable options. Um, but yes, if that if Recall is running, you will always be able to tell because the icon will be present in the taskbar. And this icon does update depending on what's on screen and what you have filtered and so on. We'll jump into that in a minute. But from here, let's actually open the Recall app and dive into what we can do with it. So straight away, you'll notice when the Recall app opens, it will ask to authenticate with Windows Hello. The app requires Windows Hello authentication to be functional. If you don't have Windows Hello set up, um, the app just won't work. So you do need Windows Hello here. Uh, and that includes pin as well as face or fingerprint. I believe you can just do get away with pin on its own if you don't want to use face unlock or fingerprint. But for convenience sake, face and fingerprint obviously is a lot quicker. And that prompt will pop up every time you open the app, which can get a little bit annoying, especially if you find yourself jumping in and out of the app quite constantly, as I have over the last few days. And what's even more annoying is that you have to always click OK or hit enter on the keyboard. You can't just set it to automatically log in if it identifies the correct face. You always have to say, yep, I promise it's me. I'm going to press OK now. So it can make the opening of the app feel a little sluggish. But other than that, it's all for security, right? It's So all of your data is secure and Windows knows that only you are able to see it. So here we are in the app itself. If you don't know what Recall does, it essentially just captures screenshots of everything you're doing on your computer every few seconds and triages it, allowing you to go back in time to find what you were doing on your computer at any given time. So as you can see at the top here, there's a timeline and I can essentially scroll back through everything I've ever done on my computer from the moment Recall began running. So you can see a couple of days ago, I was looking at the settings app, for example, or I was uh, looking at TweetDeck or I was looking at a conversation in Discord. And all of the information in these snapshots can be semantically searched for as well with this search bar along the top. In addition to that, these uh, snapshots uh, are sort of general sort of every few minutes, but you can click and hold to get a more granular um, look at the different snapshots that were captured within that time span. So if I want to go to this moment, I can do that, uh, which is pretty cool. And as you can see, every single snapshot has what I call interactable elements, but all it really is is just things that you can highlight and copy. So you can see it's identified all of the text in this image and every single bit of text in this snapshot can be highlighted and copied. So you can see there, I'll right click and select copy. And now I can go and paste that somewhere else if I'd like. And that works for images as well. So you can go here, for example, right click and you'll find the option to copy, save, share, open with, as well as a bunch of different quick actions uh, such as searching the web with Bing using that image, or blowing the background, erasing objects, and removing the background with paint. Now, this is a super handy feature because, you know, in the past, if I wanted to remove the background from this image, I'd now have to go to the website in question, find the image, right click, save it to my pictures folder, then go into File Explorer, open the pictures folder, open the file in paint, go to the remove background option in paint, select it, do that, save the image, and then I've got a removed background. But with Recall, that process is streamlined. I simply right click, I go down to remove background in paint, and it's done. <laughs> as simple as that. This is a super streamlined method of doing it. The only downside to it is that it takes, it quite literally crops the image from the snapshot that was taken. And so if you're using Windows Recall on a low resolution monitor, um, the quality of the image will be significantly lower. As you can see here, this is only 835 by 459 pixels. If this was a 4K monitor, for example, uh, that crop wouldn't be so bad, but that's just something to keep in mind if you are intending to use this feature properly. Another cool thing here is that uh, for snapshots that are of a web browser, you'll see at the top here the URL. If it's fully visible, you'll be able to click on it. So I can go straight into that website just by clicking on the URL um, in the snapshot, which is really nice. Now, in addition to this sort of lovely little timeline along the top here, there's also the ability to search for snapshots as well. And so 
This uses semantic search and it uses visual as well as text-based search. So recall can identify images as well as text. And a great example of that is with uh, finding things that you don't fully remember what you were looking for. Um, but can remember sort of an image or, or, or a type of product. So for example, a couple of days ago, I was looking at watches and I remember I found a watch. I couldn't remember which website or the name of the watch itself. So let's just type watch and see what comes up. And as you can see, we have both text and visual matches. And you can see down here in the visual matches, it's found the Google Pixel Watch 3. Now this does say watch on the page, but even if it didn't, you would still find this in the visual searches because it identified this image here, which appears to be a watch. Uh, and we can show that here by going to this result, which is from TweetDeck. Um, as far as I'm aware, there is no word on this page that says watch, but it's identified a watch because as you can see, the, there's a Galaxy or rather an Apple Watch Ultra sitting up here and so, um, yeah, this recall said, oh, that's a watch. I'll include that in the results. And so that's how visual search works. So you can search for things without really knowing what they're called. If you know the sort of type of the device or the thing you're looking for, like a dinosaur. So that is pretty cool. So you can see any snapshot has a bunch of different information along the bottom, including the name of the app or website. Uh, you can jump straight back into the app or website by clicking the button at the bottom. So for example, I can click on settings there to take me back to settings. Now, currently it doesn't take me back into the actual settings page I was at during this snapshot. That is an option developers can choose to support, I believe, but that's not currently working here in this build at least. The option to turn on and off click to do, which is this sort of AI overlay as we just discussed, which allows you to select text and images. You can disable that if you want to for some reason, or you can enable it. You can also copy the snapshot itself and use it as a screenshot in a document or sharing on social media or something. And you can also choose to delete either this in particular snapshot or all of the snapshots from this app or website. Then there's a quick option to jump into snipping tool as well. Right, let's take a look at some of Recall's settings because Recall is very configurable. It's all about privacy and security. Microsoft pretty much gives you the option to configure every part of Recall, starting with the ability to turn off Recall. If you don't want to use Recall, you don't have to use it. In fact, it's optional. It won't be on unless you choose to turn it on. And even then, if you have chosen to turn it on and you don't want to use it anymore, you can go right back in here and turn it off. In fact, you can go a step further. You can even remove Windows Recall. If we open, uh, turn Windows features on and off, you can go down to Recall here, uncheck it, press OK, restart your computer, and Recall will be uninstalled. Um, yeah, so if that's something you want to do, you can do it. If you don't, that's great. You can configure it the way you want in here as well. And so there's a bunch of different storage options, including the ability to set how many gigabytes worth of snapshots Recall can collect. I've got mine set to 75 gigabytes here, but you can set it as low as 25 or as high as 150 gigabytes. Um, and so, you know, it's too early to tell how many snapshots that would be but over how long a time. But I, I've only been using Recall for a few days quite lightly and it's only 63.4 megabytes of data so far. And I must have over 100 snapshots already. So you can imagine, you know, 75 gigs or even 150 gigs worth of snapshots could be months and months, maybe even years of data. In addition to that, you can also configure how often Recall automatically deletes snapshots. You can set it to never do that. 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, or 180 days. Mine's currently set to 180 days. So no matter what, no matter how much storage it's taking up, if a snapshot becomes 180 days old, it will get automatically deleted. Now you can come down here and also delete snapshots based on time recently. So you can do past hour, past 24 hours, past seven days, or past 30 days. So if you know you've been looking at gift ideas for the wife over the last hour and you forgot to pause Windows Recall, you can go to here, select past hour and delete those snapshots from the last hour and all of your gift browsing will be safe from prying eyes. There's also the option to delete all of the snapshots. So if you want to get rid of everything you've ever done in Windows Recall, you can do that from here as well. Rolling down, there's a bunch of different filter options here. By default, filter sensitive information here is set to on, and this will do its best to sort of not capture any snapshots of apps or web pages that show sensitive information like passwords and credit cards. Now this won't be 100% accurate, but it will do its best to identify the format of a credit card, for example, or a password and won't capture those snapshots. You can turn this off because I can understand some people may actually want that. If they want to be able to go back and recall certain information at a later point, they can turn this off and that data will be captured. But by default, this is set to on for you know security and privacy reasons. So recall won't capture that data if you don't want it to. 
Below that, we have filter lists for apps and websites. Now for apps, this is great. Basically, you can add any app that you have installed on your computer. And once that app is added to your filter list, every time it's open, Recall will stop capturing snapshots. So you can see here, I've got phone link set and keep an eye on the icon down here. The icon's currently fine. It says, you know, saving snapshots. The second I open phone link, you'll see the icon has changed slightly. And now it says one or more windows is filtered. And that's because phone link is now open, which means recall can no longer capture what's currently on the screen. As soon as phone link is closed, recall goes back to capturing snapshots like normal. So that's great if you have a couple of apps on your computer that you don't want recall capturing ever. It might be a financial app or something like that. Uh, and that's fine, you can go in here, you can add it to your list of filters and recall just won't capture it. Same goes for websites. Now this works in a supported browser, those supported browsers being basically any Chromium based browser and Firefox. Any URL you put here won't be captured by recalls. So you can see I have a couple of different financial websites and then whenever I go to that website in Edge or Chrome or Firefox, recall will stop capturing snapshots. Uh, in addition to that, this is this behavior is enabled by default for all incognito browsing experiences. So if you are in an incognito browsing session for whatever reason, recall just won't be capturing any of that data. So that's also nice to know. There's also an option here to help improve recall snapshot filtering. This is off by default and I'm assuming most people will leave this off and that's perfectly fine. Anyway, that's a quick look at Windows Recall. Thank you so much for watching and we shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.